Hey, hey, folks, here we are. We might be drunk. We got a full house today, huh? We Salamanca. got Sally, baby. We got Jamie. Hey, Jamo, good to have you back. It's been about a year. Yeah. All right. Minute. Well, you didn't do a great job, so we wanted you to build your. What do we no, have today? What are we drinking? Well, you need to take a break, so oh. you have some healthy juices here to help you guys detox from whatever happened to you over the weekend. It's been rough. Yeah. People assume we just drink on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little get well soon. It's, oh, we had a rough weekend. You. Oh, what, what's, uh, we know what's in these? Yeah, talk to us. Judging by the colors, I'd say there's carrot in there uh -huh. and okay. some kind of green veggies and a little bit of everything from the earth just to help you out. All right, well, chase it with a little Pedialyte. Mm. Yeah, how you doing? You straw oh, the paper. I really don't like the paper straw. I hate it. I don't like it. Oh, they get, like, mushy. They get yeah. mushy. The turtle thing's a myth. They made that all up. Oh, this tastes pretty good. I taste a little ginger in here. Ooh. Ginger. We're being healthy this week. That's the Irish people. I closed a bar on Saturday night, and it's like, there's no worse feeling when you're in a bar and someone flips the lights on. Oh, the worst. It's so aggressive. Yeah. You, you see the, the oh. cockroaches. You see the dirt on the ground. There's a passed out dude. <laughs> And you see how ugly everyone really is, you know, because with the booze and the lights off, yeah. people looking pretty good. Yeah. The cockroaches and the one old guy at the end of the bar, the <laughs> two survivors. Yeah, exactly. Nuclear Holocaust wouldn't get rid of them. So I got, I saw something on the street on my way here and I had to grab it for the studio. This is a real Salamanca move, yeah. but I pulled it this week. Saw a guy selling records. Oh. Yeah. Hey, all right. Cool. I just thought it was a cool look, this yes. prior one. Check this shit out. I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah, I don't know this special, actually. Uh, but look, I thought this just looked cool as hell on Whoa, the inside. That's gorgeous. That's Doesn't great. that look good? Yeah. Love it. What year do you think that is? It's got to be 79. Yeah? 80. What year was Sunset Strip? I've got the computer here. What am I asking you for? There you, you go, for? Google bitch. This is 78. <laughs> oh, got it. All right. That's exciting. Finally, we have a black on the wall. It was getting a little weird We in got here. Pryor up there already. Oh, we do? Okay, okay. We need, we need, the ones we need are Patrice, Carlin, yeah. and he said, the guy in the street was, I was like, who else you got to do? I'm due for a Joan Rivers. I was like, we should have Joan on that we wall with Joan, death. for sure. We should get a lady up there. She met Joan. Did you? Two months before she passed. How was that? I met her twice in the same day at two different situations. So my mom got to meet her the first time, which was awesome, and then I got to her book signing. So I had, she wrote me like a nice message wow. in her last book that she came out with. So wow, that forever. That's amazing. I saw Patton Oswalt made a great point about how like, you know, everybody gets mad about jokes and offended or whatever. And he's like, she was a woman doing it and opened the door. So it like imagine- It cost her a lot though. It cost her a lot, but imagine if she didn't sacrifice, we might not have any uh, funny ladies. Yeah. That was his point. And I'm also in that it. documentary of her, you see, like, there's that guy where the guy's, like, offended, and she's like, fuck you. Like, she's yeah. her mom's like, fuck you. She's, like, cool when an older lady says that. Yeah. Like, shut the fuck up. I mean, you watch her. I used to watch the fashion show, because I thought she was funny, and yeah. she would just be like, what are you wearing? You fucking look like hell. And you're like, what the hell? But she was so <laughs> ghoulish and old that you let it slide. Well, she was a cartoon character the way Rodney was. Yes. Where she was like, ow, ow, like that voice. Right. That's cartoony. You get totally. away with being meaner. Totally. Same with Rickles. He's fucking Mr. Potato Head in Toy Story. <laughs> when you're a cartoon-looking dude, you can yeah. get away with saying some shit. When you look like that, you can shit on Sinatra and they're like ah he's lovable yeah he would trash Sinatra and they would all just go with it yeah and Sinatra like you, when you're that arrogant and you're that much of a complete lunatic you have like one friend that's allowed to shit on you but you know <laughs> anyone else that shit on Sinatra he was probably like he's out that's true yeah. what is it about Joan Rivers is from Brooklyn Rickles is from Queens Dangerfield is from Queens insane that just that Tri-state area has bred so much. Larry David, Brooklyn. Seinfeld, Brooklyn. Chris, uh, Chris Rock's Brooklyn. Mel last, Brooks is but Brooklyn. But then the last generation, Woody Allen. it was like very Boston. If you think of all the that's great true. comics that came out of that's Boston, true. it was like Louis Burr, you know, uh, David Cross, like all these great comedians. Dane Cook, Dane Rogan, Cook, Stanhope, Patrice, Patrice, DePaulo. Yeah, Goldman. The shittier your upbringing, the funnier you get. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Albert Brooks. He had a regular life. He's LA. <laughs> He's very funny. Yeah. I think you could I think funny's true. funny. 
I think it's there's a good combination with Boston and New York with blue collar meets Scholastic. Mm. You got you got Columbia here. You got NYU here. You got the other one, and then you got uh, Boston's MIT, Harvard, and uh, but yet they're all working in a mill. They're all fucking Irish and angry, and they fuck with each other. It's a good mix. New York, we're all in everything together. Like Bloomberg took the subway. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I know it's a publicity thing, but like it is actually the best way to get around. So you think about that, like Bloomberg and a guy sucking on his foot in the same subway car. Right. There's something beautiful about that. Yes. You know? That's true. There's a guy jerking it. And uh, Koch. Koch took the subway. The guy jerking it is Jeffrey Tubin on the same subway car. (laughs) Just jerking his dick. There you go. Yeah, Seinfeld always said that, like, New York keeps you funny because you can't, you can't, like, relax. Well, there's so much stimulus. Like, you go to go to Westchester, and you're like, well, what, what am I doing? There's nothing to do. Exactly. You know, nothing shuts the brain off like just boredom. Totally. You know, like, you can take a million different routes home in New York, just yeah. walking. You're like, I'm going to go this. This is the direction I'm going to go. And you'll see a different thing. There's a dead guy this way. There's a hobo that way. There's a Girl Scout. It's everything. Yeah. And they say comedy goes up during, you know, shit times. You know, because you need it. So it's like when, you said, when are Westchester. Good times? Huh? When are good times, though? Everything, Every time is kind of shit, right? Well, it's always shit to somebody. Like, people say, hey, the 50s, it was magical. It was, uh, you know, unlock your door and families and suburbs and all that. But then black people were getting fucked over. Yeah, and women. And women. Yeah. And black women. Yeah. Maybe some Jews. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Commies. Commie. The Red Scare. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Everything was bad. People were like, you know, these are tough times. Really, and what were the Crusades easy? It's never good. I'm There's sure. always something. The '90s weren't bad. <laughs> I like the '90s. Yeah. Meredith Brooks, I'm a bitch. Those are simpler times. Well, Rodney King had a rough go, <laughs> but OJ got off. His wife didn't. <laughs> but yeah. What does that mean? Call it even? <laughs> What's <was> that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all right. I think the 90s were, were maybe our peak, and then 9-11 happened at the end of the 90s and 2000s, and it was all downhill. It's all downhill. Yeah, I mean, flying before 9-11. Oh. Holy shit. Great Daniel Tosh joke. Uh, 9-11 sucks, is, or I like it, because uh, I used to have to walk with my girlfriend to the gate. <laughs> I love that joke. <laughs> That's good. I remember going with girlfriends like to the airport, and you just have to wait there until yeah. the flight took off. What about, uh, how was Houston over the weekend? Ah, Houston. Houston is better than Austin. I'm saying it right now. Austin's all hip and cool. Keep it weird. Everybody's moving there. Houston's a better city. Is Houston your number one in Texas? Probably, yeah. It's very diverse. It doesn't get its due for diversity. Sure. It's it's every group, every race. Huge Vietnamese pop. Huge Vietnamese, Indian. uh, They're all overweight. So that brings them together. Because it's a foodie city. It's huge food, yeah. and it's got a little everything, and it's got different neighborhoods that are very interesting. And uh, I love Houston. Great crowds, great club. Great crowds. How'd you like it? You were just there. I had a great time. I was worried that your tickets would hurt mine. Eh, yeah, I, I worry about that, too, when we're like back to back. But, right. But you did well? Uh, went great. And uh, I even popped over to the open mic at the secret group. You're sick. I know. Well, we had nothing to do. We were bored. And my friend, you know, Andrew Youngblood? Yeah. He owns this club. So he's like, you want to go drink for free at my club? We'll get out of this green room. And I said, let's do it. And uh, then the open mic was going on. And I popped on. And was it, how was it? It was good. It's usually a nightmare. Every time I've done that, it's always I always regret it. Yeah, it's it, you're dancing with fire. Uh, you're playing with fire. Dancing with fire is that that's not an dancing expression. Dancing with the devil, pale Dan- moonlight. That's what you meant. <laughs> All right. Dancing with Fire. Is that, that the new the, album? <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about. No, but I mean, you have that. You come off that good late show usually, and then you know, yeah, <laughs> you want to you want to lose that feeling. That's true. It's the weirdest thing about comedy. You got this hot show sold out. You're killing, and then you go do an open mic for 11 people, and you've never felt you worse. You about like this is a general thing, people. This is just you. No uh, one else does this. Well, what would be an equivalent to that? Like maybe you're playing in the majors, and then you go hit a. You go to like you play an NBA, and then you go to like a. You know, pick There's up a game. story that Gary Payton did that, and I don't really? know if it's true, but the, the so the story goes: Gary Payton, if you don't know him, the glove. 
played for the Sonics in the 90s. He was a badass. His son is in the NBA. Hmm, the uh, glove. Yeah. Also Michael Jackson. <laughs> I mean, OJ. Ah, shit. I tried to bring him back. Well, he had a glove too, Michael Jackson. That's true. That's true. But, uh, no glove, no love. But that's a great nickname. for that. That's how good you are defensively. You're the glove. Right. But, so the story goes, he's at like a nightclub in like boat shoes, and some guy's like, I could beat you one on one. And he's uh, just like, No, you can't. And he's like, Yeah, I can. And Peyton, like, he keeps to the point, he was known for shit talking. Like, there's, pull up the picture of Peyton and Michael Jordan, and you just see him in Jordan's face. And uh, like, he didn't beat Jordan, but you got to give the guy props for just getting in the dude's face, like, fuck you. I love that. Um, and yeah, get that, get that image. Um, he but, was the glove, but in basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meaning, well, like, meaning he, he's like on top. He's like he was that's on how, you. That's how tight he was. On ah, you. that's yeah. Good. Look at that picture of, of no, the the one in the corner. No, the other one. No, no, the one was in his <laughs> face, dude. Come on, <laughs> come on, Google, bitch. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, look at that. That's not even the one I'm thinking that's of. That's heated. I was talking top right. Oh, yeah, but look at that. Yeah. I mean, he's way smaller than Jordan. He should not be. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. Look at Damn. him right there. Oh, you can see him saying an F word. He's saying, fuck. Oh, uh, well, yeah, the, maybe another one. <laughs> well, the, the thing is that they say is like he wasn't the best trash talker, but he just didn't stop. Uh -huh. Like, it was just the whole game. He'd, and they'd be like, dude, shut up. Yeah, right. Um, so How bad could he be? Like, hey, you fucking honky. Nice, uh... Nice legs. Like, <laughs> what is bad trash talking? Like, you stink. I th Dork. Yeah, I think, like, knowing shit about your personal life. There are people oh, that, yeah, that do point. homework, and, they, and they're like, your wife. The famous one was Kevin Garnett on, uh, on Carmelo. Your wife smells like Honey Nut Cheerios. What does that mean? Just, like, I know your wife smell because <laughs> I've been with your wife. It's like a specific. Oh, wow. I know that box. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, some guy's challenging him in the story. I don't know if it's true. One on one. And he just keeps, he's like, fine, like, fuck it. Find a park right now. He goes to take him one on one in his street clothes. He has an NBA check, which is like probably one check, like for whatever, a couple games, 48 grand or something. Maybe, uh, uh -huh. maybe one game. Who knows what it was for? Yeah. Puts it there. He goes, if you can score one basket on me, you can have this. Oh, you know how it ends. Damn. He locks him the fuck up, embarrasses him. Oh, that's great. Like, you don't realize how good I was. I popped by uh, West Forth, the park, to watch some hoops just before my cellar spots over the weekend. And you're like, these kids are incredible. Oh, really? These, I mean, they don't miss a shot. I'm watching with my friend. We're like, these kids don't miss one wow. shot. Think how good pro athletes are. Yeah, I know, right? Was it a game game or was it just a pickup? No, it's a game. Oh, okay. There's uniforms and stuff. There's a ref. There's a guy in the mic, which looks fun. Yeah, you know? there's a because I walk by there every single day to go to the subway, and there's always some good, some bad. There's a little mix, but there's one son of a bee who stands there, and when you walk by the chain link fence, he goes anywhere, point to a spot, I'll make a shot. And the first time I was like, all right, I got a minute, so I go right there, shoots it, he makes it, he goes, give me another one, give me another one, we'll go till I I miss, and I'm like. All right, he'll miss eventually. Right there. He shoots it. He makes it. Give me another one. He's like an old white guy with a ponytail. So I'm like, how many shots can this guy actually make? I was there for like 28 minutes. The guy kept sinking it. The guy's a beast. I had no idea. I was like, I got to go, man. Yeah. So Damn, I love that was it. it. You got to love the old man in the in the park. Oh, yeah. There was I used to play on like 110, and there was like an old man who just like uh, – He's just like a fat old man, but he could play. Yeah. Which is like nothing better than an old man, but he's a f chubby old man. Yeah. And he had nice. handles and he could shoot. And he, and, the, and like the kids weren't locking him up like they could have. Sure. But it was fun. <laughs> you know that guy's got some stories. He probably played with uh, Isaiah Thomas in 1981, <laughs> you know. Um, any, any peeves, dude? Oh, I got a peeve for you. Buckle up for this one. And I hope I haven't said this before. I mean, we repeat on this podcast yeah. like you've never seen. Repeeve. Yeah. Beat you. All right. Repeat uh, for a dream. <laughs> so uh, how about this guy? The guy who has to let you know he's not a certain thing when he, he tells you something. You know, he's like, look, I'm not a doctor, <laughs> but I don't think you should be drinking that much. And you're like. Do you need to be a doctor? First of all, we know you're not a doctor. Or, hey, I'm not a scientist, but you better not mix those two, whatever. And you're like, we all know you're not a scientist. No need to say it. And I'm mixing whiskey and, and gin. What does that have to do with you being a doctor? Like, we all know that's bad. <laughs> yeah. So that, that pissed me off. I had a guy doing that all weekend. 
Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. I'm no this. I'm no this. He was but. the he was the waiter at the club, and he kept being like, "I'm no bartender, but uh, I don't know about these Long Islands or whatever." And I'm like, "All right, you we weren't got drinking it. Long Islands." No, no. I'm just I'm, I'm making an example. But yeah. I hate that. You don't need to tell me you're not a doctor. You're yeah. a waiter. You have an apron <laughs> on. You're at a comedy club. We know yeah. you're not a doctor. Yeah, no, it's it is. I know what you mean. After the third time, you're like, we know. Yeah, and you could tell he thought he was cool saying it. <laughs> I'm no architect. You don't like cliche expressions. I hate them. Yeah. I hate them. And then if you use them a lot, uh, it's even worse. Yeah, I hear that. Why? What do you got? I mean, I'm no therapist, but I got uh, <laughs> no. I got. You know what bugs me? And it's I. I don't know if I've said this either, but. Uh, you ever behind like one person in line and they take forever? Mm. If it, I can handle a long moving line that takes yeah. even longer, just mentally I can handle that. But when you're behind one person and they just won't move, yeah, like, what's happening? I what know. is going on? There's this guy. There's this guy in front of me at the bank. He just keeps going. Like I'm like, what? This has been 20 minutes, and then and then I hear him go, "How was your day?" To the person, I go, "Oh no, you didn't. Don't ah, you dare make small talk. How's your How's day? How's your day?" Turn and say, how's your day to me? I'll tell you how it's going. Fucking bad. Yeah. You're ruining my day. Damn. Speed it up. No small talk when you're holding up a line. No, that's crazy. This is a couple of New Yorkers here. But how about this guy? I go to Chipotle four times a day. And I open <laughs> you're a- You're obsessed with Chipotle. I love Chipotle. Yeah. But nothing worse, because you know you got to go down the line, give me beans, give me tomato, give me guac. The taco guy kills you. Because yeah. if you order tacos, you get three tacos, and they go, a little bit of chicken on that one, that one beef, no cheese on that one, and it just it triples the length of the, of the ordering. So I let a guy in. You know, you both get to the door at the same time, and I go, all right, I open the door. Him and his friend go in. They both get tacos, and you go, ah, why did I let this chooch in? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Anything holding up a line. Like, especially in New York, this is a fast-paced city. You're a New Orleans guy. When you're in New Orleans, maybe oh, it doesn't bug you as much. So or, slow. But it does a, It south, bugs me now. I've, I've been, you know, New Yorkified. I went to school there for a year and a half, and I remember being like, wow, this is making me crazy. It like, made me crazy, the too. Pace, even, the way they t- even the way they speak to you. So, how you do? Yes. You're like, get to it. Yes. Say, get the G out. Right. <laughs> Gaffigan had a joke about how uh, people from the South, they move like gravy. Like we're just so slow and like so whoa, slovenly, and it's so true. I think it's because of the food. It's hot. We're eating gumbo. We're weighed down. Yeah, the South, the pace, it's a different type of person. The pace here, you got to move it a little bit. I'm, I'll tell you another peeve is you ever behind like four people and they're perfectly spread out so they block the whole sidewalk? Yes. Yes, exactly. Pe- people who are slowing you down in any way in this city, even when I have nothing to do, I'm in a rush. Yeah. That's part of the city. You know, so the four the, all spread out or the in the rain. I don't, I'm not an umbrella guy. So the people who have like, oh, you know, the bad. two people with the two umbrellas perfectly apart. Now there's no way through. Yep. Yep. Or even when there's one person, but they move kind of with you. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. How is this happening? They don't see. You. That's true. The Red Rover thing is so crazy because I'm like, I know you have four friends, but do you all have to be side by side? I guess. What do you think that is? Why can't people walk? Yeah. What are you, the Reservoir Dogs? Yeah. Fucking right. In it's the a ass. movie poster. Yeah. That's true. Brutal. Don't build that wall with your friends. <laughs> it does. Uh, now there's going to be someone competent. See, walls work. Ah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but no, it makes me crazy. Uh, the perfect formation. It really makes me. I, I don't know why. Or the. Uh, yeah, we're, we're just annoyed by anyone well, in the way. My thing is just what do you expect the rest of us to do? You think you hold the whole sidewalk? You get the whole city? The Avenue of the Americas is you? Yeah. Come on. What about the rest of us who have to slide by you? Not to mention they're all on their phones and the whole thing. This straw is terrible. Hate the paper straw. It's it's already melted. Yeah, it's closing up like a fucking vagina around Mark and I after listening to this podcast. I'll tell you. Hey, hey. vaginal walls. <laughs> Build that wall. This is really. Uh, That's pretty good. It's really good. But the straw sucks. Yeah. The straw is terrible. And it doesn't make a difference. Oh, you got the Let's donut it. off. Oh, fun dead. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be a we might be drunk if we weren't putting something poisonous in our body. You got that right. This is a carcinogen right here. Good save. Look, we got the glove here. 
Well done. That's not my. That's not my. I'm a righty, so it's not the right hand. But uh -huh. let's see, what we got. Oh, we got a lot of donuts. They won't let you buy one. Here's a little. This is a fun life hack for you kids at home. Go to Dunkin' Donuts, get a coffee, and then go. Can I have one Munchkin? And the guy goes, "Get the fuck out of here, you chooch!" And he throws it oh, at you. That's fucking good. Because one would be like eleven cents. They should be paying us for this shit. This is good. Wait a minute, are these jelly? There's a mix. Ah, uh, jeez. It's like New York. It's mixed. I don't like the jelly. Got to put a towel down. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, she didn't I tell me. Jelly. I was like, why would you eat the? I didn't know. Damn it. You lied to me about the I'm no chef, one. but these are good donuts. Uh, you want one? Yeah. 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 <laughs> there we go. All that right. Good hands on this pod. My girl's got a uh, IUD, no period. Really? Yeah. And no pregnant. The I don't know why every woman doesn't do this. The IUD. Yeah, she, she, it she, hurts. She hated it for a day or two. And also, you ever feel the tip of it sometimes in your pee hole? I do. It's not great. Yeah, but at least you're long enough. <laughs> it's like the little Microsoft Word paperclip popping up, like, hey, may I help you? Like, yeah. Uh. <laughs> two urethras now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it feels like that. It's a weird... You feel that poke, it hurts. It, yeah, you can't cap that off with something? Yeah, we can't put a little, like... How about, like, a little pocket pussy at the end of that thing? Oh, oh a double put. I hear puss on puss. Yeah, puss on puss. Yeah. Hey, a turf fucking. <laughs> I Why like can't it. we put that at the end of the... Uh, is that impossible? Well, this is where my girlfriend go. oh, sorry. I put this thing in my body. It hurts like hell. Then you get poked. Oh. And you're like, well, I do get poked. <laughs> it's a sensitive area. But I get it. Oh, yeah. Why can't we both complain? Yeah. We have a problem with that in America, like... Well, I have I go through this. Like, well, I go through this. Like, yeah, but mine's worse. Like, all right, but if you cut my leg off, and I cut both your legs off, sure, yours is worse. But can I complain about the one leg? Yeah. All right. No, I think you can complain. I mean, but don't you ever see? Don't you ever you ever complain like a shitload, and then you see someone in like the worst condition ever, and you're just like, we we're just talking about this in lunch. I'm just like, what? What am I doing with my life? Sure, you know? sure. You're like, this guy's living in just abject, this abject misery right here. He's got no legs. He's in a wheelchair. Something looks like he has like a brain injury. Yeah. And then you go like two more subway stops, and you're like, can you move? Right. <laughs> that's, can that's, you move? It's human nature. It's all relative. It is. But uh, when that guy's around, you do. You're like, God damn, I complain too much. But I think it's all about gratitude. So last night, I'm at Burt Kreischer's house. He bought this new house. It's unbelievable. The pool, the hammock, the hot tub, the fire pit, the deck, the barbecue. He's got a gym there. It's insane. And he's using all of it. I go out there. He's laying in the pool. Then he hits the gym. Then he does a podcast. <laughs> and then he's, he's got these big dogs running around. And I was like, this house is incredible. He, we did a, a shoot. We had cigars after by the fire pit. He really uses it. and He really loves that house. And I feel like a lot of people get rich and they go, I'm bored. What's next? He's like utilizing it and enjoying it. And I think that's the key. Do you remember when we went to Whitney Cummings place in LA? Not a room. There was, there every was room one, was empty. It was a giant mansion. One room was being used as a podcast studio. That was it. And it had pools and tennis courts and well, rock it's under construction. Wall. I was there too. I've been there too. It's, it was under construction. Okay. I'd rather shit on her, but. <laughs> <laughs> she had one room just to cry in. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that's true. That house was very un underutilized. In New York, that's just our only room. Right, right. That's just where we cry. And that's the other thing. We live in, you know, we live in Manhattan. So yeah. when I went to this guy's house, you're just like, oh my god, the front lawn is huge. But the you back still don't want to move, do you? No, I'm not going to L.A. I'm not saying that. I don't want to catch on fire. But uh, it was just really sweet how uh, how great grateful he was. Isn't it funny when when. California people were like, we've got weather. I'm like, your city is literally on fire in yeah. Los Angeles. You're bragging yeah. about weather. You're, God is sending you a message. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, this is fucking serious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the crime is bad, the fire, and then the homeless. They, they have a skid row. Yeah. Where'd that term come from? I'll look it up. Please. Yeah. Google, bitch. I've always wondered what that means, because there's a band. Little Shop of Horrors, too, has the song Skid Row. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Lumberjack camps in the Pacific North. LA's fun in small doses. It's fun in doses. Like, I was excited to be there and excited to leave. That weather, though, is pretty nice. Skid Row has its origins in the lumberjack camps of the Pacific Northwest. There Going you back go. To the early pioneer days. I don't get it. All right, they would cut lumber 
along a carved out area of the wilderness. I guess All that's right. Skid Row. I don't know why it's called Skid Row. This is like when the teacher explains something and you're like, I still don't understand. Still don't get it. I'm no professor, but I'm confused. <laughs> um, All right. All right. Well, the homeless is getting out of hand. Like they're everywhere, just, they're here just too. Popping them up, yeah. And but in they're LA, they're aggressive. still handsome. <laughs> they are. In LA, you're like shit. This guy was on like the surreal life a few years ago. This is theirs are more handsome, but I feel like ours are more talented. I think here you get a guy juggling or playing some buckets. You know, you got to work for it. A Broadway little. versus uh, TV homeless. Exactly. We have the song and dance homeless here. Right. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, millions of people, you got to stand out. Yeah, you're like, this dude was on Cats and Broadway five years ago. And, yeah. You know, he can still crank out Mr. Mistopheles on the F train. <laughs> because he's still got it. The homeless in New Orleans fucked up because they all do the same shit. Yeah. They all found a rusty trumpet somewhere and they learn how to play it. <laughs> or they have the, we do the, uh, the bottle caps on the bottom and they tap dance. And it's great, but I'm like, you, you see the same uh, yeah. shit block to block. You're like, yeah, yeah, when the Saints go marching in. Come on, move it. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. they they get pretty good when I you got have, all day to practice. I used to have a joke about that, how you see like a homeless guy come on the train and he's like... Uh, he, he he he's like singing you're like oh my god this guy's incredible then another guy comes on he goes i'm homeless i don't have any money and you're just like ah you came at a bad time <laughs> you don't want to follow the really talented homeless guy you know that's true the yeah, you gotta bring it yeah that was the angle it was like you know it's like here it's like america's got talent they're like i'm homeless i don't have any money and like and what will you be performing for us this evening <laughs> <laughs> you did that show awful let's hear it was this Howard Stern? No, I, I think if I had Stern on, I would have done better. Yeah. I think Stern uh, really liked comics. Our boy Gary Veter made the top five. That's that right. Year. He likes comics a lot. Howie Mandel is cool as shit. He's but cool. But I, I was on when uh, <laughs> when Simon replaced Howard, who's like, uh, he was really nice. And, oh, God, <laughs> kill me. Look at this promo. <laughs> kill me. How oh. cool. What a cool dude. There we go. What do you think? It's five, six years ago. You got to have a story. Yeah. My cousin will be famous in a few years. <laughs> Ugh. So thirty for thirty. Like I said, oh, this is the best part, actually, because I get a, they had to cut together me. Get, I got a standing O at this show. Whoa. This is like a five thousand seater in the Palisades. What? Oh no, Pasadena, not Palisades. Uh, Pasadena, but. I'll tell you the backstory for this in a sec, but yeah, keep going here. This is the, no, no, keep going. The way. When the elevator the other day, I farted. I laughed. And the pretty girl came on. I was like, that's not funny anymore. And it was my stop. I got off. Door shut. She stuck with a fart. Funny again. The cut to them all standing here. No, leave it. After a fart joke is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And by the way, that set was in L.A. I'm walking. <laughs> they, they were like, we'll make it look Hilarious. like it's, I'm like, they're like, you're a New Yorker? Yeah, we can make it look like New York. Yeah, they yeah. just have like a set on some lot. Oh, that's they're great. They're like, this is a New York set. I'm like, this is, I'm so unhappy right now. <laughs> they, they and then, the uh, Warner Brothers lot. I love the way they cut together. I'm just doing a fart joke. Everyone's like, yeah, that's very. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I remember before that set these two Jewish rappers went on and I thought they were like kind of good and Simon's like you're terrible you're the worst least talented people I've ever seen I'm just like oh my god I gotta follow this Damn. then we're all like they didn't feed us for the longest time I was panicking I remember there's like uh, I'm texting my mom like I'm so anxious this is like I have to be here for like 12 hours and uh, no, no no hold on a sec everyone's like freaking out back there and, they, and it's one of the things where they're like uh yeah, we after I got off, I got a standing no. After I got off, they were like, "We don't know if we're going to use any of that." And I was like, "I just flew to LA." Wow! <laughs> and I got a standing ovation, like against you, like you picture. You see comics bomb on this shit. Oh yeah, I'm nervous, and, and they're mean to you. You don't just bomb; you get picked apart. Yeah, and it's like you have no like. That's our biggest fear is not getting final cut. And I remember, uh, yeah, I was I was freaked the fuck out. So. Uh, after that, I was like, you you might not use it. And then like, later, they're like, we're going to use some of it. I was like, thank God. Yeah. Like, all this geez. shit. Did you get a bump? Because that was a huge show. Yeah, when it aired, it was like a four-minute segment. I mean, it was like the biggest. It was like 10 million viewers. Four Still, million. Like, how many... I mean, four minutes is a lot. Yeah, no, it was, I mean, it's better than, way better than like any. Because you think like think what like a late night set gets now, like one million? It's maybe. Like 10 times that. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, or more, maybe. You know, it was, yeah, that show, was, when I did it, was huge. Damn. If I went far, I think it would have. But I don't think those those fans are as loyal as like real stand up no, fans. No, no. 
Because you see people get a big bump from it, and then it kind of like fizzles. Right. I don't know if they stay with you. But they know what they're doing, those cheeky bastards. I did last comic, and they, they herd you like cattle. Then they don't feed you. They want you to get a little testy. Because it helps, uh, you know, the bickering and the fighting and all that shit. And uh, we did last comic. They left us in a van for like an hour. They're like, sorry, guys. it's We're coming along. We got lost. We're sitting in a van. Now we're all fighting with each other in the van. And then I farted. Somebody got pissed. And, you know, it got ugly. And they don't let you out of the van. They're like, stay in the van, blah, blah, blah. Then we go, and there's no lunch. They had tofu wraps. So, you know, these, like, fat black comics are like, what the fuck is this shit, you know? <laughs> like, pissed off. And then you got to perform. It was brutal. I did a, G- uh, a last comic. I mean, those shows are painful, and they really uh, – I remember the second – so I moved on in that round, and the second round uh, – God, it was like they put me in some hotel where there's construction, so I couldn't sleep. Uh, so it's like you're irritable. I'm like, I feel like they knew. Yeah, exactly. they call around. They're like, what place is getting like drilling yes. early in the morning? Then you get there. They're trying to get me to shit in other comics in the show. I'm like, I'm not gonna do it. Like, how, do you, how did they try and provoke that? They'd be like, What do you like? A comic was on bombing, and he's like, What do you think of this? And I was just like, Like some crowds are tough. It's like I'm just like avoiding. Like I'm not giving them shit. I'm not. Yeah. Gonna, I'm not gonna tear someone down on fucking NBC. Good for you. That's messed up. And then, uh, although it was bad, but uh, a lot of hacks. But I'm not gonna say that shit. No. And then, uh, yeah. And then I went on at like midnight. I got there like 9 a.m. I went on at, like midnight. Ugh. And uh, I did well. Still, I did do well. But uh, by the way, George Lopez was a special guest judge, and I was like, "Come on, comic to comic, yes. give, me, give me that golden buzzer, dude." And I remember. Uh, there was some like Latino uh, dance troupe that went on earlier, uh, and he was like, "You get the one golden buzzer." I was like, "God damn it, you went Latino over comic. Come on!" Yeah, Latino's gonna win every time. And uh, so they and they were they were really good. Like they, and it was like you see these people. It's like there's like twelve of them. It's so funny. There's like twelve people. They all have to be in like perfect you know sync yeah they're stretching they're doing all their thing i'm literally i can go on drunk like you realize how, <laughs> what, a, what a ruse what we're doing is because i'm panicking i'm texting my mom like oh i'm so nervous and she's like read a book i'm like read a book uh, like there's two fucking slobs from atlantic city dancing mambo number no. five next to me you think i can just like <laughs> get lost in literature right now come on right this is insane so <laughs> i remember uh going out and i do pretty well like i was like i mean the the, the clips online you can see it i'm doing i got like an it was like a two and a half minute set, and I probably got at least one or two applause breaks. Nice. I did pretty well. And uh, I remember Simon's like, your first set was better. I'm like, it's midnight. Yeah. Jesus. This crowd's been here for 10, 10 years, 10 he was, hours. He was really nice in the first round, too. So I was like, maybe Simon's like going to, maybe he'll be like my guy. Like, yeah. Maybe Simon and I are going to have like a, a bromance, you I, know? I got a beef. My ex-girlfriend loved Simon. She's like, he's so sexy. I was like, what? That guy? He sucks. And she's like, he's something about him. He's sexy. I'm like, <laughs> if if you fucked him, he'd be like, your vagina sucks. <laughs> your tits are bad. You need to change genders or whatever the hell. So your like, pussy is just guy. dreadful. Yeah. I mean, is- <laughs> but <laughs> when I did last comic, they hated me because they do the uh, so. How do you feel? And you gonna you gonna wipe the floor with these other guys? And I'd be like, I don't know, maybe. And they were like, Come on, come on! Like, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna you gonna take these kids to school? I'm like, Well, some of them are pretty good. I might flub a line. And they they cut the camera. Like, you gotta be competitive. And I'm like, I'm not. I'm just I just want to do well. And they, they hated that. They don't realize you don't want to. It's so nerve wracking to give someone your life story and see what they do with it. Oh, that like, too. It's yeah. nerve it's nerve wracking enough to share it and you have control. But then when you give it to someone else right. who you know it's in their best interest to make you look foolish because that's what people respond to. Yeah. Is failure. Like we know a comic who went on AGT and they made him look worse than the actual set was. Like they'd cut away to people like, What? Uh. <laughs> Can you imagine going on and doing okay and then they just cut to people like yeah, that was Louis C.K. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, I mean, reality sucks. Oh, what is that? What are they trying to show that he got work done or something? It looks different. Yeah, he got some neck uh, suck in. You can see. Like is it possible that he just lost weight? I think women find yeah. him. Yeah, he's mean and rich. Yeah. <laughs> Does he do anything for you as a as a lady? No, really. Who's like an older guy that you're like? That's a hot older guy. Um, that's a good question. Uh. I don't know. Clooney? It's kind of cliche. No, I don't yeah. think so. 
Hmm. Harrison Ford. Sometimes I just see some nice zaddies on Instagram out of nowhere. Like the algorithm just puts them in front of me. I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. But I don't know who they are. <laughs> yeah, that algorithm's pretty good. I mean, you go to my For You page and it's tits, Norm MacDonald, asses. That's it. That's hilarious. And like a little bit of skateboarding. I've got tits basketball and comedy. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, got, I got Michael Jordan over Byron uh, Russell in game six, or I have uh, just some random MILF's uh, cleavage. Yeah, it's that's mine. on your algorithm, or is it just us? They're just mine. <laughs> <laughs> I've, yours are on mine as well. <laughs> but yeah. Tits. Tits. They keep the world round. So we do have some news. <laughs> oh, let's do some news. You guys want to jump into it? Jump in. Let's do it. This is a post. Uh-oh. And Frank, still in the news after all these years. <laughs> Tiverton Restaurant. That's in Rhode Island, right? Yeah, they wrote. Can you widen that out? Can I'm we trying to, a full yeah. Tiverton here? Restaurant receives backlash for Anne Frank's social media post. It's it's hotter than an oven in here, ah! and I should know. Holy shit! That's uh, not a good not a good uh, promo tactic, probably. That's so bold. the guy claimed to who posted it said, "I didn't know that was Anne Frank when I posted." It. <laughs> that makes no sense. What? Yeah, what do you think it was Greta Thunberg? I mean, do you, we don't you, know that face. What do you think? Yeah, what, that, wait. So he's like, wait. So my perfectly structured joke no longer works. Right, right. What do you think? Who do you think it is? <laughs> Even if he thought it was just some victim from the, the Holocaust. Yeah. yeah, it's still fucked up. Oh, not, not a, the famous one. <laughs> yeah, it's really. You really don't know where the world's gonna go. You're like in an attic somewhere writing a diary, and they're like, someday some dude uh, with a bar in Rhode Island is yeah. gonna use you as a punchline. Right, right. I think she's dealt with worse. She can handle it. Oh yeah, tough, tough lady. All right, well, what else we got? Boomer man is uh, really struggling with the old HTML Jesus, out here. But uh, <laughs> she can handle a computer, man. This is good lord. All right. <laughs> yeah, and Frank. That's like saying don't look down. You're just going to look at him. Did you read the book? I, of course. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, did you? Pretty good, She's yeah. a good writer. Hey, we should make that the comedy we write. <laughs> <laughs> it's an Anne Frank comedy. <laughs> it's about like an springtime attic. for Hitler? Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> female heavy, strong female lead. Uh, she was pretty light by the end, I think. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a good point. All right. Woo. Woke warriors say identifying race of ancient human remains contributes to white supremacy. Ooh. Activists don't want gender of human skeletons identified either as they can't escape their assigned sex. Wow. Well, that's not going to be a problem for this generation because you can just pull up their Instagram and be like, look at that ass. Definitely a woman. That's true. Yeah. yeah we got a lot more evidence these days. But that woman who had the ass can change. They could. So but, it's but also, it's like, I mean, you could just, I think we can say shit going forward, too. I don't know. Like, I, uh, <laughs> just like, are you looking at, like, what does that mean? You're looking at Hitler. You're like, I mean, he identified as a man, we think. Yeah, he presented as white. <laughs> I, got, I don't know what that means. I, you know. Yeah, what does that, what does it matter if they're, we get their race? What, what does that have to do with it white It doesn't. Supremacy? They're fucking dead. They're not going to yeah. be hurt by who they're assigned. Exactly. But I don't even get where white supremacy comes in. I saw the story also, uh, it had uh, an angle saying it was like, don't assume their gender. When, when you dig up a Neanderthal, don't uh, say it was a, a male Neanderthal or a female Neanderthal, just say it was a Neanderthal. I think they had bigger problems back then. Yeah. I think where's my next meal coming from Right, was a pretty big one. Yeah, or here comes a mammoth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> wow, we got too much time. Oldest known gay. All yeah. right. All right. Have archaeologists uncovered the remains of the first known gay man? The male skeleton was found on its side facing east. Obviously a homo. <laughs> and was surrounded by domestic jugs. Well, maybe not maybe gay. Not. <laughs> but objects objects no, previously real, seen it? only in female graves. An oval egg-shaped container, usually associated with female burials, was also found at the feet of the skeleton. Mm. Well, I, I saw this article, and I think it's because some men were, you know, they were buried with like a bad lax or something like that. Uh, and this guy was buried uh, streaming The Real Housewives. So <laughs> I think the true test, if we got the skeleton, you got to go off wrist. Yeah. You know, if we got a, if we got a <laughs> fucked up limp wrist, that's the gay test. When I see egg-shaped container, I'm thinking that's the vibrator. Ah. Ooh. Uh, well, is that now, a good vibrator? 
left the egg. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you remember that old DePaulo joke? He's like, I was hooking up with a girl. She pulled out a dildo. It looked like a pepper shaker. <laughs> <laughs> Big black thing. <laughs> pepper shaker. <laughs> That's great. My gal texted me this weekend, which I don't know how to take this. She goes, uh, the, I can't find my vibrator charger. And I'm like, all right, well, it's fun. I know you're about to jerk it, but also I'm not there and you're jerking. But also... You have a vibrator? I don't know. It was a... It, you thought of me for a weird reason. Yeah. You didn't think of me to help you come. You thought of me to help you find the thing that's going to help me come. That's a great point. That's weird. Yeah. Probably. I don't know. That shows my role. <laughs> my role isn't getting her off. It's, it's you know, helping her fix shit. Yeah, you want to be on the fucking, on the floor. You don't want to be an assistant coach here. Right. But yeah. I wasn't there. You're the IT guy for her coming. Yes. <laughs> Hello, customer go. service. <laughs> Thank you. Come again. All right. <laughs> what about? Yeah, that's uh, that's weird. That's interesting. Although we never get, have to notify them when we're gonna. Ah, uh, good off. point. I still do though. <laughs> I don't have to, but I'm like, just want to let you know. I'm jerking one. Yeah, Phil Hanley, our boy, had as a joke about. Uh, a girl was dating and said, uh, do, you, do you jack off to me? And he goes, oh, yeah. He goes, it's an easy crime to cover up. <laughs> uh, that's true. His other one, I don't, I don't know if this is in a special. Maybe we'll cut this out if it is. But I mean, all right. it's going to be out soon anyway. Uh, and we'll like, promote right. special, yeah. The girl I'm seeing sent me a, a still photo of her boobs, and she said, I want you to jerk off to this. And he's like, what am I, a World War II GI? Ah, uh, that's, tr that's true. It's hard now. Yeah. We've, with the porn we have. It's you know? very relatable. Women will sometimes ask you, like, like, oh, did you jack off to that? And you're like, you, do you want to see my browser history? Do you want to see what it's taken for me to nut? Yeah. Now, here's why women and men are different. 1980s comedian, but... <laughs> Let's get him a fucking blazer real please. quick. Please. <laughs> I'll roll the sleeves up. Uh, if... Phil Han Phil Hanley sent me that photo of her tits, and I jerked off to him. And I was like, "Hey, I saw your tits and jerked off to him." She'd be like, "What the fuck?" But if I sent my gal a dick pic and she sent it to a friend, and her friend jerked off to my dick, I'd be through the through the roof. I'd be on the moon. I'm with you. Okay, yeah. no, I think you're right. It took All me a right. second to process, but I think yeah, it's a it's a fair point. Yeah, it's less violating. Yeah, if you if a woman saw a picture of my dong and had to rub one out, I don't care who it is. It could be my aunt. I'd be flattered. Hmm. Eh, maybe not the aunt. <laughs> maybe the uncle. Also, yeah. Phil's girl sends him a picture of her tits. Um, it's less exciting than if you saw his girlfriend's tits. That is also true. Yeah. You're I had a woman supposed to see him. I had a woman dump. I want to do a bit about this. I had a woman dump a bottle of wine in my bed, like by accident, and I was like, oh my god. And then she goes, she just grabbed my dick, like, I'll make it up to you. And I'm just like, that's fucking female privilege. Yeah. I can't ruin your shit and be like, all right, whip out your vagina. That's so true. Let me, no, I'll make it up to you. Great I was point. with you the night after that. Yeah. You told me, you're like, I just had the worst night. You were up all night, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a bad night. Tough well, night. Che had that great joke about like how on his birth, on his girlfriend's birthday, he would get her flowers, chocolate, take her out to dinner. On his birthday, she would blow him. And he's like... <laughs> That should be a Tuesday. You know, that should be a birthday. You should, we should just be blowing each other all the time. Again, female priv. Yeah. It's a, yeah. You're not going to turn down a BJ, but yeah. No, it's not. Didn't but he I'll, have another privilege joke you just told me like an hour ago about your sneakers? Oh, that wasn't even a joke. Uh, one time, me and Che were hanging out, and I showed up, and I had some New Balance on. I had a hole in the sneaker, and he goes, that's white privilege. Because I think, as we were talking about, I think black people, they dress so sharp because if they don't, people are like, what's up with that guy? Wow. You know? So that's like, oh, you never think about that. Wow. You know? Yeah. Like uh, Bill Burr had that great bit about how he's like, black guys with dirty sneakers scare the shit out of me. <laughs> Which is, that's kind of profound. Yeah. Wow. His bit. Yeah, Speaking yeah. of, didn't you see the new Burr special? We, we did. We, we, we talked about it we on here. We really blew it up, yeah. We blew it loved up. It. We loved it. Yeah, I love Bill. He's so excellent. good. Hey, hey, folks. We Might Be Drunk is brought to you by Raycon. I've been listening to a lot of Rolling Stones lately, and it's been great. Whatever you listen to, it'll sound better with Raycon earbuds. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. They fit perfectly and don't budge. Raycon's offer three sound profiles, noise isolation, plus mode, and awareness mode. Raycon lets you listen 
whatever way you want. I like them. I use them to jog and they don't fall out. That's my favorite thing about it. The sound is good. They, they, they envelop the whole ear and they, they fit in. They never fall out and I jog and uh, they sound great. And I don't hear all the bullshit around me. So uh, I'm a big noise isolation guy. Great on planes too. Try not mm. those pesky uh, unaborted kids get the same <laughs> quality uh, audio as other premium audio brands at half the price with wireless charging. Raycon gives you eight hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life. Check out Raycon's wireless earbuds. Go to buyraycon.com slash might be drunk. One word today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's B U Y R A Y C O N dot com slash we might be drunk. One word to score 15% off your order. Buy Raycon.com slash we might be drunk. Oh, no. It's just, mi- my- just might be drunk. Just might be drunk. Sorry. <laughs> I'm used to saying it that way. That's M I G H T B E D R U N K. One word. Raycon, get on it. Now, a word from our sponsor, Better Help. Sometimes you can fixate on a problem for so long that you don't take time to find a solution. It can be tough to train your brain to stay in problem-solving mode when faced with a challenge in life. When you learn how to find your own solutions, there's no better feeling. A therapist can help you become a better problem solver, making it easier to accomplish your goals no matter how big or small. I think therapy is important. I'm in therapy. Uh, He mostly blames my mom. It works pretty well for me. Uh, no, she's a great woman. It's <laughs> therapy is good. You work on your shit, you deal with it. So you don't, uh, you know, blow it up on someone else. It's like, it's like jacking off. You, you wait, a, you let it load too long. You become horny as shit. You try to fuck everything. Do that with therapy. Is that a bad plug? We'll see. Better health is <laughs> online therapy that offers video phone and chat therapy sessions. You can choose not to see anyone on camera. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash drunk today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash drunk. All right, so Brooklyn Bishop robbed during sermon, taking over a million dollars in jewelry. Damn. Whoa. Sure, this was a bishop and not an old lady from Boca. <laughs> <laughs> Why does fuck? a bishop have a million dollars in jewelry? He doesn't. I think this is a work. I think this is a WWE work. What does like raise money? He He's just... laying down while the robbers come in. Oh, this, oh, wow. this is a robbery. This guy on the left is like a assistant pastor or something, just not moving. That's a good what? cameraman, though. He's, he's like, let me let me get all of this. We'll get it captioned. We'll blow it up on IG. What the fuck? This guy isn't doing anything? I'm so confused. Yeah, everything's off screen here. Is there an audience? I think it's recording it on TV. Oh. Where's your God now, bish? <laughs> so they're robbing him of his jewelry here. Man, it's taking a long time. <laughs> wow. To wow. Robbing a bishop. I wonder if that's a worse crime than robbing a regular. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. I think that's like only with cops, probably. Officer down. Yeah. Yeah. You shoot an officer, it's way worse punishment. Is that what? It, uh, that was the whole thing. That's oh, it? okay. Yeah. We didn't need a video for that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like a very exciting video. Damn. That was a... Uh, Gunpoint. Yeah. You saw the hooded guys come in and everything. That was wild. Yeah, dude. You know, my parents got held up at gunpoint when I was 14 at my really? house. Yeah. That's why we moved eventually. Damn, I remember in New Orleans, I, my, the one night my friends went out without me. Like, I was just like, I stayed in. They went out. They got held up at gunpoint. New Orleans, man. They oh, fucking. Oh, yeah. Scary. What happened with your parents? I was at a Mardi Gras parade, and it was like a Thursday night. I was out with a bunch of friends, catching beads, getting drunk. And I came home. There's a bunch of cop cars. And, uh, you know, I see my mom talking to the police. She, I'm, I cry. I'm freaking out. I'm like, what the hell happened? Because you just assume they're dead. You see all the cop cars. The yeah, neighborhood. this is the movie. You're running in slow motion. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, you run in, and the cop goes, you better not. He's holding me, and I push him <laughs> off me. And I You're on your in. knees. They're playing gimme shelter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I see my brother, my dad, and they're all talking to the police, and the cops are, you know, doing this shit. And I'm like, oh, okay, they're all okay. And then one of the cops told me what happened, and I just broke down. And then this is this, this is stupid 16- or 15-year-old boy thinking. I go, 
get in the car, boys. And me and my friends drive around <laughs> New Orleans aimlessly. Like, if we see those guys wearing my mom's pearls and my brother's shoes or whatever, we're going to get out and beat the shit out of them. Meanwhile, it's like two scary ex-cons with guns. But we're like, let's drive around. And, you know, my friends are like, okay. And I'm looking <laughs> out the let window. Them, let them run out of steam. Just keep driving. Yeah, yeah exactly. The exactly. second you see them, you run out. You're like, you piece of shit. Immediately get shot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was... But they caught the guys. Did they? They went because they took the credit cards and the ATM, and they went to the ATM, and then yeah. we got the video footage. My dad ID'd them. They're wearing clean sneakers, but they turned out they were your brothers. So that's how they. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So they got them, but that yeah. that was like the last paper straw, and we got the hell out of there. <laughs> did your mom give them the code to the ATM, Bosco? Did yeah. Did that happen? Yeah. Oh yeah, all of it. Is it she... boss code? Bosco. That's a Bosco, Seinfeld. 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 Yeah. But Bosco's did she give them the good. code? Yeah, yeah. That's scary. That's right, Bosco. George likes Bosco. And after that, my mom had to go to therapy, and that was in the 90s when it was like, oh, shit, she needs therapy. Damn. To cut to every person we know in therapy. Yeah. Now it's like we're in like a real therapy movement right now. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. It's a good time to be a therapist. That, that job was really pandemic proof too like holy shit yes. that was like the only job that got like better during the pandemic you're like oh i don't have to pay for an office anymore i just chill at home and right good point did you do therapy yeah i was gonna say they're at home mine had to like check on muffins well <laughs> oh yeah ding oh yeah. mine would have, my mine would have his wife like talking to him he's like i'm in a session and he'd be like hold on one second let me just deal with him like yeah this never happened when i went to your office <laughs> yeah my therapist is running a restaurant he had an Anne frank poster it's crazy <laughs> but his jokes were good yeah <laughs> by the way if you take a text while you're in therapy your ther therapist would be like this is really hostile what you just did to me meanwhile this guy this guy is taking i take texts in therapy sometimes you do? oh i eh, not I mean, physically not face, face to face no i don't okay but on, but on, on, on zoom so, uh, well it's because it would pop i have to i sometimes forget to shut off my oh, messages right. they pop up and if it's nothing important i don't respond but uh you know sometimes something pops up yeah that's true and you can't help but see it if a text pops up on your phone and you see it you can't ignore it because now your brain is th is Thinking about that and processing that. You always feel like you like that one hour is like when Hollywood's gonna call. Like they want you to be the new Spider Man. I'm like, I'm like, fuck, dude, I missed it. Yeah, I was bettering myself. Uh, <laughs> but Andrew Garfield's out. Sam Morell's in. I'm like, no, like, it, it expired. It was only for <laughs> it was only for 13 minutes. But that's the thing is, every time I go, I'm taking a phone break. I'm putting my phone down. I'm putting it on airplane mode, and then you open it, and your mom's like, I'm having another kid. You're like, Wait, what? Are you 71? What's going on here? You just look back. It just says rape 40 times. You're like, what? Yeah. yeah. The hell? You look behind you. A guy's raping you. <laughs> Fuck. Should answer my text. You do. I, that does happen, though, where it's like question mark, question mark. I'm like, the one time I put my fucking phone down. I know. I know. I I, but then really, do you ever really miss anything? I know. I know. My therapist doesn't. I mean, he's he's pretty good about it. But the one thing is he's older, so I will deal with like tech shit on the uh, on the Zoom sometimes. Uh, where he's like, I can't hear you. I'm like, I hope this isn't coming out of my time right here. Yeah, right. That's true. You ever had them cancel on you? Feels pretty good. That's a good feeling. It is good because you're like, yeah, okay, I got some. I'll do something else. Yeah. Because I don't really want to go, but I know I have to. Right. So when they cancel, you're like, it's it's nice. What are you at? About uh, once every two weeks. Every week. Every week. Wow. What, what are you doing? I do once every two now. By, yeah. I've been spacing it out. By monthly. But, yeah. But uh, I don't know. The weekly was I was making up stuff. <laughs> you know, I was like, I'm out. I'm out of shit. I'm like, how about the those nets? You know. You're making up shit? Yeah, well, yeah, I was running out of shit, but I had to fill the tub and pay it for the guy. Yeah, you're running bits? Yeah. I, it's not a bad place to, like, sneak a bit in every That's true. Because, this, like, he's not faking laughs. That's yeah. true. You know? And I, I've told you shit that, that Alan has said to me, and you're like, that's a bit. So I've gotten bits out, and you so get, have you. You get bits there. And also, yeah, because also it's, like, a place your mind is free. Like, if you don't look at text for, like, an hour, you're like, holy shit, my brain is, yes. like, moving in a different speed. And you're unloading, and you're vulnerable. So it's almost like a podcast. When I do get a laugh out of him, I'm like, I take it down. I'm like, how many people take notes in therapy? And he goes, you're the only one. I was like, all right, good. <laughs> you take notes? I take notes. What? If he says something really heavy, I want, I don't want to forget it. Oh, see, if I he just... says something, if he says something really good, I don't, I'll, I know I will forget it if I don't take a note. I'm like, oh, that's I, I don't a do good that, observation. Yeah. I film it. 
I filmed the whole thing. I bring a camera in there. Well, speaking of bits, you guys cooking up anything? Oh, I, I got, got a hot I got, one. I got some ideas. You go first. I need your help on an ending, but it's it's. I finally have a good one. I feel like the last four weeks I've been bombing with well, the new bits. That, that's kind of what this is for. I feel weird when I bring something too prepared on here. True. But sometimes my shit's either so bad it's not worth bringing in or it's kind of finished. Exactly. It's hard to find that middle ground sometimes. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so our, one of our friends is sober. Mm -hmm. and, I wonder who this could be about. Yeah, exactly. we well, got a couple sober friends. That's true. But he's sober because... The last time he got shit faced, he fucked somebody and got herpes. Yeah. So now he has herpes <laughs> and he's I know sober. Who this is about. Yeah. But every time we hang out, we can't drink, obviously, because he's sober. Yeah, yeah. So we have to like have all these activities. We have to go fucking bicycling Ooh. or canoeing and I'm like or rappelling and I'm like, dude, just because you have herpes doesn't mean we have to do the commercial. Wow, that's funny. And that hits. And now I'm like, all right, now where do I go with it? So I thought about like, what about the side effects? You know, you always hear herpes medication, side effects. And uh, he's like, yeah, this medication I'm on, the side effects are like depression, laziness, uh, suicidal thoughts. And I'm like, maybe I have herpes. <laughs> and that's one way I might go with it. Well, I would take out laziness because you're being active in the joke, too. So, so ah, I would point. say like depression, uh, suicidal thoughts, uh, you know. Hiking. Hike. Anxiety or, yeah. or neurotic, yeah. N neuroses, explosive diarrhea. You're like. <laughs> Shit, I think I have herpes. Right, right. <laughs> you know? So the first part is hitting, and I'll, I might try that one tonight on some show, that that second part, because I feel like a joke has to have, it's got to have a little more than just that one laugh. Yeah. It feels like I'm leaving shit on the table here. Yeah, no, I think that's funny. I mean, I also think it's funny that, like, you have to be more active because he has herpes. Yeah. Like, his mistake is making you do cardio now. Oh, that's good. You're like, I got to go fuck. I have to go shoot hoops in the park because you fucked a chick with an STD. This right. is crazy. But it's making my life better. Hopefully, you get uh, chlamydia. <laughs> next thing I know, I'm, I'm, uh, I got a 12 pack. <laughs> you know, next thing I know, I'm in a triathlon. It's like the new P90X. Your right. friend's getting uh... a. <laughs> yes. He drank a 12 pack. You've got a 12 pack. Ah, there you Ooh, go. There we go. 12 Salamanca. pack. Nice. Hector Salamanca. Okay, what do you got? So I had one, I, I don't know where to go yet, but like the idea is like, I'm looking at apartments and it's a lot like uh, going on dates. You know what I mean? Like you look at the apartment and then you're like, wow, this is, at first you're like, this is great. And yeah. then like, and then after a minute you're like, oh shit, whoever was here last did a real number on this place. I don't know. Oh, that's good. Like the last guy might've fucked this up a little bit. That's good. You know what I mean? That's good. Like the first part did okay, where I'm just like, yeah, it's it's a lot like internet dating. The pictures always look better online. That's it was like whatever. Yeah. Then this, that's the line that hit. The line where I'm like, whoever was here last really fucked it up. I don't know where to go next. It's like one of them was like, it'd be easier to go dating if you had like a dating realtor. Like someone to like make you, who built Ooh. up the person you're dating with. Maybe I like that. Someone who's like, uh, this this girl have you seen this girl she's already gotten multiple offers today like uh -huh. this girl because i was looking at a place and this guy was like trying to show you ever go to one of these places this may be a different bit but this, this guy is like he's like dude this building like you get, you, this building's gonna blow you away we're yeah. in the elevator he's like do you see how fast that elevator was i'm like you're not gonna sell me on an apartment i'm not amish yeah, you're not, yeah. the elevator's <laughs> not shocking me yeah well I try to do a bit like this, and David Tell had a similar bit, so I drop it. But I was doing Tinder and Zillow, mm. how similar they are, but this is different. Yeah, yeah. But I, I dropped no, it. I know that Tell bit where he's like, I'd like to dump a load in that, like washer dryer. Exactly, and I'd like exactly. to dump a hot load in that. Yeah. It's a so, great bit. But how about what the difference between dating and apartment hunting is you want to you want to make it serious immediately. Like if you like the apartment, you're like, I'm That's in. the angle. I'm moving there in. We go. Yeah. You know, you with a girl, you're like, I'll move in in a year yeah. or two years or whatever. Yeah, I'm not signing shit. Yes, exactly. You're like, hey, <laughs> with an apartment, you're not like, what else do you have? You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and how about uh, the last guy fucked this up, but she's got a lot of work done. Uh, you know, fake tits. On there. No, yeah. difference is like work done on an apartment is good. Uh -huh. Work done on a woman is not as good. Yeah, there we go. You're like signing a lease and signing a prenup. Right, right. New kitchen, new face. Yeah, yeah, new kitchen, new tits. Ugh. Although, come on. <laughs> oh, oh, how about this? Here's, here's, your, here's your tag. That last place was uh, really fun. I mean, we went in the back door. 
right. I'll see you all in hell. Media Thank you, sponsor us. He's doing it. I mean, considering we feel like shit, this isn't like the worst, you know. Yeah, I did a KFC radio. It's Today? At, no, no. This is like last week. And, you know, it's at Barstool. Yeah. I go in there. They're all watching us on the every monitor really? is me, you doing this show, and then I saw one they were watching uh, Kreischer, one was watching Tiger Belly. I'm like, I was walking down the ha- the halls there, I was getting high fives, dude. So I got to go in for you. So I closed a bar down on Saturday night. Yeah, I'm drinking at a classic New York place called Corner Bistro. Love it, classic, oh, great, one spot. of Bourdain's favorite spots too. I great to late night burger. Good burger. Mike Myers there a lot. Really? Oh, really? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Does he have the butcher's knife? He's a regular there. <laughs> yeah. R- uh, wrong Mike Myers. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, we were there all night, and uh, my boy John Weisberg, we're, we're hanging, getting lit up. That's a great and spot. The Real bartender village. is cool as shit, this guy Jack, and he goes, uh, he made some comment, and uh, and then he was like, "What do you, we were talking for a while, and he's like, what do you do? I said, oh, I'm, a, I'm a comic and whatever, and he's like, oh, man, I used to bartend at this place, and they get all kinds of huge names popping in, uh, like this guy Mark Norman. Like, we, oh, my friend and I, we both started laughing our ass off. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, a, that's a low bar for a huge <laughs> name. You can scrape up a barrel at this place. <laughs> I knew he wouldn't be able to take that compliment. You know what? But, the, yeah. the, new, the new compliment is uh, my friends are sending me shit like on dating apps, and yeah. they're like, Guys, like I know a girl, and she'll be like, guys are using you in their photo as Ooh. their as their cover. And that's a big like, one. That's kind of nice. Yeah. But. That is nice. Yeah. So thanks for sending those ladies. Hell yeah. Well, wait, wait this is Corner Bistro? Yeah, yeah. The oh, bar, go wow. in there sometime. I love that. Get I go there drink. all the time. That's one of my yeah. favorite village spots. We Very were, village. We were drinking a lot of vodka all night, and then at some point we were drunk enough that we switched to White Claw. And let me tell you something, man. White Claw is fucking good. It goes down easy. I like white black cherry White Claw. Let's fucking go. That's my favorite flavor too. Love it. But the Hangover is nothing nice. Yeah, why is the Hangover so bad? Because it's all corn syrup. It's all chemicals. Is there a lot of corn syrup in it? Mm Mm-hmm. It's malt liquor. Yeah. It's malt liquor. It doesn't say what the liquor is, so it's like a malt liquor. Exactly. Yeah, it really fucks you. I really was hurting. Yeah. It's a smart drink though, because it's so light and airy that you feel like you're not doing anything. Then three later you're like woof i'm hammered yeah i was not feeling good yeah you don't want to end on white claw so you close the place out like what 4 a.m what is that 4 a.m yeah wow that's impressive thank you yeah it really is impressive is, <laughs> impressive is really the right word for that not uh sad and pathetic <clears throat> well that's uh, the, that's the problem with houston <laughs> or but in new york you're the bar closes at four you go home you go yeah. to bed in houston the bar closes and then we would go to a friend's house and drink there because everybody's house is so big and there's a big couch. You don't bring people to your house in New York. Yeah. You know, it's too tight. Tight. Yeah, any wrecks? By the way, I watched the bear on your wreck. It's incredible. It's pretty good, right? Man, that main, uh, all the acting's incredible. Acting's that, that great. main dude, I'm like, holy shit. Like, that's like, and the, and the guy who plays the cousin, I'm like, that's like a- that's He like steals a, it. That's like a De Niro, Mean Street, yes. Eric Roberts, Pope and Greenwich Village He's type of character. He's from the last season of Girls. He's excellent. Oh, really? He's amazing, yeah. They're like, all, I and mean, the cast is so good, it's beautifully, <laughs> it feels so Chicago. Yes. The big Malort sign. Yes. I love it. I, I love when something is a love letter to a city like that. It's it captures so good. it with the L train and everything. I know some people that don't like it. I talked to a couple people that don't like it, but it's it's so up our alley. I feel like the way that that tension it's so fast. The yes, way yeah. yeah. That, that last episode is so good. Oh, I haven't gotten to it. Oh, have you? Gotten? I finished it. Yeah. Oh my god, it's great. Not to give anything away, but the first half of the last episode where they just ooh, it's heavy. Get there, baby. Okay. I also have heard. I haven't seen this show, but I've heard the new show uh, also on FX. Uh, the old man is incredible. With Jeff I heard Bridges. that too, actually. My parents love it, and our boy Ronan was like, "It's oh, so good." He hates everything. He hates everything. He's such a fucking hater. Interesting. Are you guys watching The Offer? People keep wrecking that to me. The Offer. I know. I haven't seen it. Miles Teller. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's the story of the it's some, about a patron the, the making it. of of The Godfather. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can't go wrong with Jeff Bridges and John Lithgow. I know, right? Two titans. By the way, we see you guys harassing Charlie Sheen on social media to yes. come on this podcast. Keep coming, baby. Keep doing Keep it. Keep hitting up the Sheen. Even Simon Rex, our boy, even texted me. Did he text you? No. He said, I, the, the, I'm listening to the pod. I hear the Sheen talk <laughs> loud and clear. I've already texted him about it. Oh. He said, I haven't heard back. 
He might have changed his number. Like he changed his number a lot. We're getting so cool. that's one degree of separation. That's, exactly. We're there. We're exactly. close. That's like that's what cool party dudes do. They change their number a lot. Yeah, that's true. I gotta do that. I have the same number <laughs> since high school. <laughs> Me too. Me too. <laughs> I ran to someone on the street. He was like, same number. I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, same, same. People always go, what's your number? And I write it down. They go, 504, New Orleans. I'm like, yeah, same number. That expression, I've got your number. Oh, yeah. Where's that from? That's got to be that. It's got to be that. Well, I've got your number. Yeah, 917. Are you, you 917? Too? Damn. Yeah. When 646 came in, I was kind of like, I want no part of that. What about 314 is the other one? There's another. There's a third New York. I don't know. I think it's three one four. Two one two is a New York one. Two one two as well. That's it. Three four seven. Sorry. Damn. Late bloomer. Sorry, over bro. Here. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Nerd alert. Put the gun down, Matt. Put it down. Oh fuck, he's dead. Yeah. He fucking killed himself. Hey, I All think. We, of- uh, sorry, I think we went a week without a shooting. Did we? Hey, look at us. Depending when this comes out. Yeah, good point. And also depending what you consider a shooting. Ah, That's shit. definitely not true. That's true. <laughs> That's 100% not true. Yeah, you got me there. So you're doing a wreck there, Mark? Would I'll look this up. Oh, yeah. I didn't even give one either. I just, oh, my... You did the bear. No, but Mar- that was Mark's wreck. I was commenting on the wreck that he gave that I now watched. Well, um, I could wreck Pedialyte. Also, I want to give a shout out to High Noon because that is the best seltzer, I think. Real yeah, exactly. I can't wait till we do those RPDs. Is that what they call those little canned uh, drinks? Oh, yeah. RTDs, sorry. What I call them? RPDs? Yeah. Role playing game. <laughs> yeah, RPD. R- RTD. You're sorry. RPD? We're gonna, I, I want to do Old Pals. I want to do Manhattans. I want to do Boulevardiers. Yeah. And hey, you don't see those, so that'll be. Exactly. Old Pals. That sounds great. And I got to give a shout out to our guy, Chris, who's the whiskey distillerer. Uh, and I had lunch with him in Houston. He got us the steaks and shrimp and oysters. It was I saw amazing. That. I looked at me. He was texting me. What? Uh, he gave me some great bottles to take home. Did he give you some bottles? No, no. Well, what the hell? You, he took you to dinner. Yeah. But uh, I drank some of it last night. It's great. He gave me great whiskey. Oh, he knows his stuff. I, I'm pumped. I mean, he's been fun to work with. I think we're going to have this. I know Bodega Cat's been taking forever, guys. It's it's really, we're this close. Now mm-hmm. it's like getting past some bullshit state yeah. laws but like we're there it's coming it'll be online first and then eventually he's gonna he said he's gonna send us 10 cases dude it's going and we'll, we'll send it to our friends and families i'll bring bottles out i mean i already brought it to the cellar one night i was drinking it with uh phil hanley liz the manager shane gillis they were all very very impressed yeah it's gonna be at the comedy cellar by the end of the year hell yeah and like you can order it at the comedy cellar yeah that's gonna be fucking cool how new york is that trip how New York is that trip? You go to the cellar and you get Bodega yes, Cat? Yes, good point. Wait, you're a d- distributor? Yeah, I work with the distributor, so hopefully it comes my way. See, it's all locking in. I would love to get that on menus. Please. That's Let's what get I do. that shit. She's in with every bar in the city. Let's get yeah. into some classic bars in New York. What are some classic bars that need a, a corner bistro? I mentioned it to him, and he was like, we'll, we'll see. I'll, I'll bring a bottle in, man. Oh, please. I'll fucking bring Have a Mark bottle in. Mark, you do. Oh, yeah, I'm a big yeah. shot. He's a big shot. I'll bring a headshot. Holy shot shit, now. are you big name comedian, Mark Norman? <laughs> we got stopped in the street on the way here. Yeah. Some guy goes, hey, man, I'm a comedian. No, no. And he first said, hey, you're sexy. Oh, hey, Mark yeah, Norman, hey, you sexy. sexy beast or something. Yeah. Nice. And I was like, oh, hey. And he goes, I got to talk to you, which immediately I'm like, I'm out. I don't want to talk to you. You're out of the closet? Yeah, I'm out oh, of the God. closet. And he goes, uh, I got to talk to you. And I'm like, all right. Well, there you go. And he goes, I'm a comedian. I go, all right. That's we in the deal. And I got out of there. Literally everything that Mark doesn't want to hear. Yeah. Do my yeah. podcast. And you're like, all right. <laughs> right. There's no chance that will benefit me in any way that st- if I stop. He's, oh, I know. You know, it'll be like, can I do your pod? Can you give me some tips? Can you take me on the road? Whatever it is. So. Yeah. How's that Pedialyte treating you? Grape it, is a good flavor. Do you want to try it? I'll take a sip. It's fucking delicious. Love a little grape. It's a great flavor. Grape culture. This poor bastard <laughs> was on the red eye today. Oh, yeah. Got off a red eye this morning. Yeah, dude. I took, listen to this uh, cocktail of of sleeping pill. I took three melatonin, half a Xanax, one sleeping pill, and an edible. You got to be careful there. I slept the whole thing. <laughs> I did. I I didn't even plug my phone in because I fell asleep so early, and I woke up to. Oh, uh, yeah. A well, bad landing is really the worst thing. It was bad, but it woke me up. I had a bad landing 
recently. Uh, it was the last flight I took. Really bad landing. And just like, we just went boom. Everyone was like, oh my God. Jesus. What's good about that is you don't have long enough to be scared. That's true. Because it yeah. just happens. You're like, what the fuck? Man. Try not to make a Kobe. We're going to keep it moving. But yeah, yeah. Bad landing is rough. But you know what else is a bitch in a flight is uh, when you... Do you sleep on planes? I am I can't. Uh, not you? even a cat nap? I, if, I, if I'm if i in one of those lay flats, I can maybe. Oh, yeah. But I'm still 6'3", so those fucking lay flats are even... I'm Even in those lay flats, I'm kind of... My toes are kind of peeking out. That's true, yeah. Uh, well, can you sleep? I can sleep pretty good. I can get like an hour, but I drool. <clears throat> so first off, I wake myself up going, like, oh, shit. <laughs> then you're all embarrassed. And then you're like, ah, oh, and it's on your shirt. So it's a mess. <clears throat> Terrible. But it's worth Sat it. Sat next the to a really bad guy on the way back from Costa Rica. I did a red eye too. And every like, it was, so it was dark in the plane, quiet. Yeah. Like, every so often you just hear, ah, uh, this is the guy next to me. I hate the you loud yawn guy. And then he like would ping the, you know, the guy. Do you think he was like, trying to get your attention? No, he was just, that's just him. He was, something was off. Because then mm. when the guy came, he'd be like, can I get a Pepsi with ice? Like screaming. Uh, like, he's right here. And everyone just woke up. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, get you guys riled up here, you two. But we had a nice, peaceful plane ride. You know, it's red eye, so those lights go off immediately. Orthodox Jewish kids, they wouldn't shut the fuck up. Everybody hated them. <laughs> Brutal. Yeah. They had the, the hair thing going and everything. The payas. Yeah, Brutal. <laughs> don't don't make a payas joke. <laughs> I'm not, I did it once. I got it don't out. Do it. <laughs> but every kid on the plane was fine. Hispanic kid, black kid, white kid, but those Orthodox Jews would not shut the fuck up. Well, there was that story years ago where like these these Orthodox Jews would not uh, like they won't sit next to women on flights, oh. so they won't change seats so the flight gets delayed. Oh, and it's like you got to check your religion on the flight. Exactly. Like, what what it, does the religion the say about the red eye or being on a plane at all? So like, I mean, it matter? I mean, it didn't help. I was throwing bacon at him. But <laughs> Mark, all right. <laughs> Fuck you, pay us. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, pay me. Leave your religion off the flight. You hear that, ISIS? Yeah. When we're on the plane. Take it well, easy. Well, that one more so. That one's more upsetting than the. Than the loud Jewish kids. It's close. <laughs> I hope this episode doesn't get flagged on YouTube. No. YouTube is cooler than Instagram, right? Instagram mm. will flag fucking anything. Everybody's getting flagged now. I'm fucking shadow banned still. Really? So what is going on? I don't know. How do you get out of it? Like, be a nice There's boy? There's only one way out. A John Wick type revenge journey. <laughs> Here's the movie. We got the pitch. But yeah, Billy Wayne Davis, a comedian, friend, funny guy, he did a Tucker Carlson joke and it got flagged. Wow. So it's like you get it on both sides. Yeah. It's crazy. Everybody's well, uh, nervous. I got a toast. We haven't done oh, a toast, toast yet. I love a toast. We've never done it. We haven't done it in a while. I got a new one. This is a weird one, but a, a toast to pantry items. Pantry Peanut items. butter, tuna, beans. They're fucking clutch. Sometimes you're just like, I don't have time. I, I just want to open a can of tuna. I want to make a quick melt. Yeah. I like the pantry items. I like how you can kind of bust them open whenever you feel like They don't it. go bad. They don't go bad. That's the true. The peanut butter, you don't have to refrigerate it. You just pop it open. You take a scoop. I do that every morning. Love a pantry item. All right. I never heard of it referred to as a pantry item. Is that not like a pantry it. item? It's a pantry item, yeah. What about a cupboard? It could also be a cupboard item. All right. All right. Well, my side checked out. Okay. No, I like I like uh, some tuna. Tuna is always solid. Tuna, I eat it out of the can. All the, I, I'll put a little olive oil and salt on. That's what I do. You know what I do sometimes? A little olive oil, everything bagel seasoning. Throw oh, that shit on I there. got the same thing. I get crazy. I go, pepper flakes. I go ranch. That you mix it good. up a little. It's like a tuna salad. That sounds nice. I mean, you do mayo. Why not a tangier mayo? Have you seen the tuna in a bag? Uh... Oh, the sealed, hermetically yeah, sealed. Of, yeah, it's yeah I've like gotten it. Like they have a eat. hotel lobby sometimes. Yeah. You're, drunk, you're drunk at the <laughs> end of the night. Too. I'm like, give me that tuna and the saltines. Yeah, I've done the same thing. That's a sad moment right there. Yeah. You're, <laughs> I got leftovers at a restaurant, put it in my mini fridge in the hotel, forgot about it, got drunk, woke up. Now I got this, it's basically beef stew and rice, congealed, no microwave. It's four in the morning. I got no fork. I don't want to be an animal and use my hands. I noticed there's two coffee stirrers Ooh. on the little coffee thing. Chopstick situation? Exactly. I take them, and I force-fed myself that fatty, brown, viscous jizz all night and went to bed. 
Love it. Yeah, I had the eating ass uh, <laughs> ring around my face when I woke the up. The Rocky music plays. He's like figuring it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing worse, too, when you wake up at a hotel and the sheets are dirty from doing this shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dirty sheets in a hotel. You uh, just, you're just like, I'm, what, who raised me? What kind I, of animal uh, am I? It looked like a big skid mark. Got to leave that bit extra tip, too, when you're like, I'm really gross. This is a really, I left this room gross. Yeah. You ever get in a look? I know we got to wrap this thing up, but you ever look down a hotel? You're walking down a hall, hotel hallway, and you look in some rooms. They have the door open. There's some wild shit going on in there, like boxes of snacks and waters and just stuffed animals. And you're like, "How long are you living here?" It's gross. Paul can't play us. <laughs> yeah, right? well, you think you think we have the rights to Bill Conti? <laughs> is that who that is? Uh, isn't it? Wow, good. It is. Wow, what a pull. Oh, this, you better believe this is on my gym playlist. There's a fucking wreck for you, a gym playlist. Yeah, that's big. Love a gym playlist. That is That'll big. That'll fucking get you ready to go down. I mean, you're hungover. And I forced myself to go to the, just bike a little bit, do some push-ups. Like, I had to force myself because I was so hungover. But I was like, I'm going to hate myself if I don't work out and take a cold shower. Yeah. But, yeah, you got that gym playlist. Got a little of that shit on there. Got a little bit of do a little dance, make a little love, get, get down, down tonight. tonight. Great what? composer, too. Jim Playlist. I don't know if you know him. Uh, <laughs> what, what do you got in there? Uh, <laughs> what's on my Jim uh, Playlist? Yeah. I go, uh, I go. sadly, I go 90s alternative. Like, what, what are we talking? Like, I feel alive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, Pearl Jam, shit like that. You're, Mark's getting yoked to Third Eye Blind. Yeah. <laughs> Sammy Chop kind of life, <laughs> baby. Yeah, Mambo number five, Thong Song. It's all 90s. Do you really have all that shit on I there? love the 90s. Sugar Ray? Oh, I can fly. That's the, that's the only guy who fly. left a rock star life to be on Extra. That's true. What a weird... It's like, do you want a tour as a rock star? He's like, no, nah, I'd rather be the guy who comes down when you're in a hotel on the road. <laughs> yeah, him and Smash Mouth. Yeah. Well, actually, no. He's, do they still go? They're still touring. They're still touring. Yeah. They wow. have some fucking... They have some... They're catchy. They you have can't some hits, deny dude. it. Lead singer like wasted like not Hell doing yeah. well. Oh, good for him! Singing on stage. Pull him up. He looks like an evil Guy Fieri. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They've got some. You, you can pretend you don't like him, but when you hear, <laughs> you're in a good mood when you hear that shit. Yeah, it's fun. That was in the movie Shrek. Look at that. That's Guy Fieri, uh, the twin, the evil twin. Guy Fettuccini. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie singing. All right. We got. Uh, I mean, th some of those songs are fun, man. Uh, all star, they're yeah. Kind of I mean, they're cheesy, but they're fun. They're fun. I Walking mean, on the sun hits yeah. for a reason. That that made them billions. I bet. I think those Bill, are heavily sampled billions. songs. Billions? I think it made them billion. at the billions. Heyday. Not even close to. They, I think someone else owns those songs because okay. they're they're very ham heavily sampled. All right, maybe not billions. Yeah. I don't know anything about numbers. <laughs> billions. Billions. <laughs> Good show. <laughs> All right, we gotta wrap this thing we up. We gotta wrap this up. Tour dates? Should we do some oh, tour sorry. dates? Oh yeah, what do you got here? I'm going off the dome. Well, my special's coming out on September 1st. Oh, Netflix, you better fucking watch that shit. Uh, Wait, same what did you say? Netflix? Yes, sir. Woo! Same time tomorrow. Did you just uh, announce that just now? No, uh, no, it was last, last week. week. Good for you, Jack. Thank you, bro. Now, are you doing a, I don't know, what do you do on the internet, like a premiere thing where you talk to the fans and an hour before? I'll figure it out. Same time tomorrow, September 1st, Netflix, tell your friends. Uh, I'll be on, uh, I'll be in Burlington, Vermont coming up, uh, Dania Beach, Louisville, Miami, or not Miami, what does that say? Irvine, I'm fucking blind. Omaha, Phoenix, Lexington, New Brunswick, OKC, Springfield, Missouri, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Happy Thanksgiving to me. Kansas City, Tacoma, Spokane. See you on the road. Samuel.com slash slash shows. And those are the shows you want to go to because uh, you'll the Netflix will be out, so you'll be working it out. Yeah, dude, so, I'm working it out. Uh, go see the Craftsman crafting i will be in oh jeez well i'm going off the top of the dome seattle portland maine portland oregon vancouver uh toronto new orleans boston uh keep going keep going show all dates keep going keep going uh, Richmond Funny Bone, Red Rocks Amphitheater, 
Uh, something in Bakersfield at the Brewing Company San Jose Improv. Toronto, Canada in October. Oh, Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh, Pittsburgh, the Roxian Theater, and Royal Oak, Michigan Theater there. Mm. So, uh, oh, Philly at the Fillmore, Nashville, Boston, New Haven, Connecticut. So, come on out and say hello. Best pizza in the country, brother. Pepe's. Yeah. Very good. Sinatra used to get it uh, delivered to his house. All right, that's it. We might be drunk. Get yourself a drink, a Pedialyte, a fake tit. We'll see you out there, folks. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Jamie. Salamanca. Sally. Gotham Studios, Matt Peters. Hey, hey, I got to piss. 